You are watching Econoom TF4, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In this episode, we're looking at Chapter 8 and Demand and Supply in Action. This is Part 1 of 4. In Chapter 8, we build on what we've already learned about supply and demand in Chapter 7. In this case, it's all about the interaction of the demand and supply curves and the result that these interactions have on the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Let's start with an increase in demand. The figure on the right shows an increase in demand and the whole demand curve moving towards the right. The result of this is a new equilibrium at the point E1 and there is an increase in the equilibrium price and an increase in the equilibrium quantity. The supply curve remains unchanged. The opposite is true in the case of a decrease in the demand. The whole demand curve moves towards the left. The end result is a new equilibrium at a lower equilibrium price at a smaller equilibrium quantity. Please note that this is not a change in the quantity demanded. It is a change of the whole demand curve. The supply curve remains unchanged. From chapter 7 we already know a lot about the factors that cause changes in demand. This table gives a quick summary. Let's start with the price of substitutes. This would be the example of butter and margarine. Let's say that the price of butter increases. This means that the quantity demanded is going to decrease. You'll be eating less butter. But there will be an increase in the demand for margarine. The whole demand curve will move towards the right. In the case of complements, we can talk about cars and tires. If the price of cars decrease, that means that there are more people who are going to be driving around and you will need more tires. The whole demand curve for tires moves towards the right. For changes in income, we know that an increase in income leads to an increase in the demand. That is the case for a normal product. Tastes and preferences can also play a role. If suddenly a product becomes very fashionable and all the consumers are buying it, that increase in the taste will lead to an increase in the demand for the product. Finally, expected prices can also play a role. If one expects that the price is going to increase in the near future, it leads to an increase in the demand right now. Here are a few examples with the graphs shown as well. Let's say that there's an increase in income. This leads to an increase in the demand for normal products. The whole demand curve moves towards the right. There's an increase in the equilibrium price and an increase in the equilibrium quantity. In the case of an inferior product, an increase in income leads to a decrease in demand. You buy fewer baked beans when your income goes up at every price and the whole demand curve moves towards the left. The equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is lower as well. The opposite holds for a decrease in income. If income is less, you will buy less of a normal product. The whole demand curve moves towards the left. The equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is lower as well. If your income is less, you will be buying more inferior products. So all of a sudden you lose a lot of income you're eating less fillet steak, but eating more cans of tuna. The whole demand curve for tuna moves towards the right. The equilibrium price is higher and the equilibrium quantity is higher as well. We can also look at increases in the prices of substitutes and complements. Substitute is the butter and margarine case. Let's say that the price of butter suddenly shoots up. That means you'll be buying a smaller quantity of butter. That's a reduction in the quantity demanded. But you still need to put something on your bread, so you'll be eating more margarine. The whole demand curve for margarine moves towards the right. The equilibrium price is higher and the equilibrium quantity as well. In the case of complements, these are products that are used together. This is the cars and tires example. So if cars all of a sudden get really expensive, that will mean less people driving. And the end result of that is fewer people buying tires. The whole demand curve for tires moves towards the left. And 
the equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is lower as well. The opposite happens when the price of substitutes or the price of complements decrease. Let's think about hamburgers and pizza. All of a sudden pizza becomes much cheaper and the result is you'll be eating much more pizza. The demand curve for hamburgers though will move towards the left. Since you're eating pizza all the time, your demand for hamburgers decreases at every price. The equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is lower. In the case of compliments, you can think about coffee and cake. If coffee at the Jonge Acker suddenly becomes less expensive, you're able to afford more cake and the demand curve for cake moves towards the right. So did we achieve the outcomes of this first section of chapter 8? Can you explain how changes in the demand influences the equilibrium price and quantity? And can you use graphs to illustrate and explain this? For more information, have a look at chapter 8 in Moorinfuri. There is additional information available on your fundi and you can answer the quiz questions. Finally, you can follow at Ikenoom on Twitter.